Hello and welcome to this little video about me. Now, it's going to be a little bit egotistical here for a little bit, but I just got to introduce myself so you can have an understanding of where I'm coming from, go through a number of pieces of information about me, and I really look forward to getting to know you a little bit. So first off, I want to give you some background as to uh, my expertise education background and research interests that I have. So in terms of my education, I have a bachelor's in psychology that I got from the Canadian University, St. Thomas University. I'm duly citizened in um, Canada and the United States, so I was able to go to school in Canada. I have a master's in counseling from the University of Southern Maine specific to psychiatric rehabilitation, which was my field for quite some time. When I started teaching, I found a master's degree in instructional technology, andragogy, pedagogy, and the use of technology in the classroom. Found that to be a very useful degree to get. And then I got my PhD in psychology with a focus on online learning just in time for the pandemic and the research that I conducted. I was conducting research on online learning right when that began. So there's very, uh, as, as difficult as all that was, quite an opportunity for the kind of research that I was doing. So speaking of research, I have a number of research interests, of course, coming right from my dissertation, The Social Nature of Online Learning, as understanding not so much the cognitive aspects or even so much the technological aspects, but the importance of social interaction associated with online learning and what that means in terms of success. I'm also into developmental theories and processes, particularly the construction of our personal identity. As I said before, I'm very into understanding and studying the use of various technologies in the classroom. And finally, I'm very interested in areas of what we would usually associate with industrial organizational psychology, and that is the study of human performance factors and motivation. These are the things that I enjoy very much talking about in nearly all of my classes, those topics tend to squeak in every once in a while for all of that. Now, I have research interests, but of course I have personal interest. I, I'm not only try to keep a good balance with, uh, with work and play. And so my personal interest, of course, first and foremost, my family. I'm married to Katie. I have four grown kids, uh, two from a previous marriage, and Katie has two from a previous marriage, and I have one granddaughter. And I'm pretty involved in her life. I like to read, go to movies, and attend all kinds of cultural events. I'm a foodie. I like to go to different restaurants. And certainly, as we'll talk about traveling in just a little bit, I like to do that in different places. I do a lot of writing, both of poetry and my technical writing is the actual content development for all of my classes. I like to write the books that I use in my classes. I do a lot of traveling and I work out with various sports. I try to keep athletic because born in 1965, the body ages and I try to stay limber. I'm involved in a number of different sports on a very regular basis. Primarily, I spend a lot of time cycling. I do a lot of road work on my bike. I have a spin bike of my own at home and I use that. And much of this is not only to stay in shape, but because I've been participating for many years in the annual event called the Truck Across Maine. My mother, my grandfather, my grandmother, all, and my father all died of cancer related to heavy smoking. And so the advocacy for clean air has always been a big part of my life. And I look forward to this event every summer it's a great 180 mile ride over three days and I have to prepare a lot, make sure my body is ready for that. So in addition to that, I also play ultimate Frisbee, trying to play a little bit 
of disc golf, which I am not good at at all, but I'm practicing more and more. I like to kayak, particularly in the ocean, although I don't get to do that very often. And I play a lot of racquetball, sort of. Uh, used to play a little bit more tennis, but I like that I don't, if I really screw up on a shot, I don't have to run a mile to go get my ball. It's just like right there. So it's a little convenient to play racquetball. So that's really cool. Now, of all of these, the hobby that I enjoy the most is, I didn't put it in my education, but for a short period of time, I went to the University of Maine and studied music. And so I, my principal instrument is the bass. I play guitar, I play ukulele, I play drums, I play a mean radio, and I've been playing professionally in bands for a very long time, but the band I'm currently in right now is probably the one that I'm most excited about, and that is Yellow Brick Road, a tribute to Elton John. This is a national act. We play all over the country. We tour while I'm in school, during the summer, and here's me with Gerald, uh, the person who plays Elton, and uh, this is during the song where I have a little bit of a bass solo and be trying to play parts back and forth. Here's a little bit of one of our stage performances here with our backgrounds and everything, nice lighting in this theater that we played at. And finally, really active, as you can tell from Gerald's leaping off of the piano. It's a very, very active band. This is an incredibly important part of my life. It's a super cool hobby. Uh, very close with the people that, in the band. We've been together for over 20 years. And so really, really huge part of what I do. Now, a little bit of focus on what we're doing here now. As a teacher in your class, face-to-face -face or online, tell you a little bit about my teaching philosophy. Now, first, I love graphics. Love doing these things, love putting pictures up and making animations and stuff like that. You may encounter that quite a lot. I like to be interactive, meaning I like to hear from my students as they're learning. I like hearing questions. I like hearing comments. I like hearing challenges to the assumptions that I make in the class, to the presentation of material that I make in class. It's interpersonal. I like that interaction, again, not only interaction in terms of the material, but also personally getting to know each other. Over this time, I'm interested not only in you as a student, but you as a person. What I see the class that we have is a partnership between you and I. I've set the stage for learning, told you what you need to do, and then now you're coming to that platform and expecting me to support you through that process. And so I'm committed as well to your success. I hope you're more committed to my, your success, but it's very important to recognize that we are both working to make this happen. I'm very open to communication, very open to talking about how to make this work for you so you can maximize your success in this class. Speaking of success, Although I sort of think that I'm a pretty good teacher, I am, I, I'm going to straight out brag, I'm a really good student. I found school to come very easy most of the time, but I also knew what to do when it came to challenging material and when it came to the life balance between, you know, I got my, the, the, the second master's degree and the doctorate came along with kids and full-time work and all the ups and downs of life. And I understand that's a big part of everybody's experience in education. So I, over the years, I've sort of broken it down uh, as, men, as much as advice as people will give you. Certainly time management is important and, you know, and creating that balance, scheduling times to make sure that you have um, a break times. In fact, I, even, I have a whole video out on my YouTube channel, Dr. K's Psychobabble, on my YouTube channel that talks about my method of time management that has to do with interspersing uh, periods of cognitive load, a high cognitive load, 
activity followed by a low cognitive load activity as a way to feel good throughout your uh, day and get lots of things done. But when it comes to success in school, I will pass on some wisdom to you, a very simple formula that kind of overrides all the other things that you've been taught about being successful in school, coming from someone who has been successful in school. Very straightforward. Go to class. Go to every class. Read the instructions. Read the readings. Read the articles. Read other people's discussions. All of that stuff that we would talk about in terms of taking classes, do those things. If you skip class, it's not going to work. That's, it's just not a long-term solution for success in school. Do your homework. Every assignment, not just some, every one of them. As an instructional designer, I know that every assignment that I create has goals connected to the overall accomplishment of learning in the class. And it's very important to do every assignment. You practice, do extra assignments. You're only in class at this point in your life. Get the most out of it. Ask questions. Now, this is probably the most beguiling thing for me, but I have encountered over my 25 years of teaching that some people don't ask questions when they don't understand something. I'm a psychologist, but I'm not a mind reader, so it's very important to... They didn't even offer that class. I would have liked that. They, but I'm not a mind reader. I throw things out there, particularly in an online class where you're reading material and you're sort of acting very independently. It's very important. You come across something, ask me. That, for one, I love this material. So anybody who sends me an email and asks me about what I've written or what I'm talking about, I will just, I just eat that up. That's what I like to talk about. And so feel free to ask me questions, ask other people questions. But remember, the teacher is the one who probably knows the answer the best. And finally, this last step, repeat over and over and over. Go to class, do your homework, ask questions. That is your pathway to success. So let's not get it any more complicated than that. Now I've gone on and on about myself and I apologize for bending your ear this much. And I look forward to the opportunity to hear about you and what's going on in your life and how we can make this journey through this class together. So thank you for your time and have a great, great class.